Mr. Beat presents Presidential, presidential Elections in American, American History. History. The third presidential election in American history was held from Friday, November 4th to Wednesday, December 7th, 1796. Incumbent President George Washington refused to run for a third term, setting a precedent that would last until 1940. Without Washington, who most Americans loved, this created a big void, and 12 different candidates all competed for president and vice president. Again, under the original Electoral College, each elector could vote for two people for president. The top two candidates, after adding up all the electoral votes, would be president and vice president. There were seven Federalist Party candidates and five Democratic Republican Party candidates. They each technically ran alone, as the formal position of a running mate didn't exist yet. While in Incumbent Vice President John Adams was the leading candidate for the Federalists, and former Secretary of State Thomas Jefferson was the leading candidate for the Democratic Republicans. Both parties ran multiple candidates for president, hoping to keep one of their opponents from being the runner-up. The other Federalist candidates were Thomas Pinckney, former governor of South Carolina, Oliver Ellsworth, U.S. Supreme Court Chief Justice from Connecticut, John Jay, governor of New York, James Iredell, U.S. Supreme Court Justice from North Carolina, Samuel Johnston, former U.S. Senator from North Carolina, and Charles Coatsworth Pinckney, U.S. Minister to France from South Carolina. This is the only presidential election that I could find where two brothers were competing against each other. Thomas Pinckney and Charles Coatsworth Pinckney were brothers. The other Democratic-Republican candidates were... Aaron Burr, U.S. Senator from New York, Samuel Adams, Governor of Massachusetts, but more famously American Revolution leader and second cousin to John Adams. Oh yeah, and there's beers named after him. George Clinton, former governor of New York, and John Henry, U.S. Senator from Maryland. Unlike the 1792 election, when everyone knew George Washington was going to win, the election of 1796 was up in the air. Because of this, this was the first election where there was heavy campaigning on both sides, with the Democratic-Republicans mostly campaigning for Jefferson and Federalists mostly campaigning for Adams. The campaigns began to get nasty and angry, with Federalists associating Democratic-Republicans with the violence of the French Revolution and Democratic-Republicans accusing Federalists of being too cozy with Britain. Since the 1792 election, Tennessee was added to the United States, increasing the Electoral College to 138 electors. And here are the results. John Adams won, receiving 71 electoral votes. He became the second president of the United States. Thomas Jefferson finished second, receiving 68 electoral votes. He became the second vice president. Wait a second. What? Two main opponents together? Awkward. Yep, this election was the only one in which a president and vice president were elected from opposing tickets, and would be a big reason why the Twelfth Amendment to the Constitution was later ratified. Alexander Hamilton might have unintentionally helped cause this. Trying to go against Adams, Hamilton tried to convince people to throw a vote to Jefferson in order to get Pinckney, Thomas Pinckney that is, elected instead of Adams. This combined with the fact that many Adams electors failed to cast their second vote for Thomas Pinckney caused the unique result. Result. Interestingly, several other candidates also received a high number of electoral votes. Pinckney finished with 59 electoral votes, Aaron Burr received 30, Sam Adams received 15, Oliver Ellsworth received 11, George Clinton received 7, and everyone else received 5 or less. Despite the fact that George Washington did not run, he still received 2 electoral votes. Compared to the 1792 election, Democratic Republicans made significant gains in 1796, though it's difficult to pinpoint how much since just seven states allowed popular voting in the election. I'll see you for the next presidential election, buddy.